Hello, my name is Michaela, and I am Cinematic Stitches here on YouTube, and I thought I would give this floss tube thing a try. I have been enjoying floss tube for the past nine months. I love to cross stitch, so I thought it might be fun to try my hand at it. I also have an ulterior, ulterior motive, pardon me. I'm trying to get better at speaking on camera, um, mostly for my job. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. I don't know if I'm even going to edit this. Uh, it's just going to be like a rambling stream of consciousness, so buckle up. Uh, a little about me, I live in Vancouver, Canada. I have a beautiful fluffy cat who is just on the couch beside me here. Doubtful that you will see him, but he's very cute, so you can take my word for it on that. Um, and yeah, I've been cross-stitching since 2016. I have always known about cross-stitch. My mom, I was gonna say was a cross-stitcher, but I recently got her back into it. <laughs> so she was a cross-stitcher when I was growing up. Uh, I remember um, like going down on trips to Le Conner and there was this really cute cross-stitch store there. I don't even know if it's still there. I don't know what it was called. I was a child, but that's where my mom would get her kits. And I loved watching her, not necessarily stitch the kits, but I liked watching her like color in the pattern sheets as she was moving through. I don't think I ever tried it as a kid though. Uh, I think my sister did, but I wasn't really into that type of craft at that time. But in 2016, I thought I would give it a shot. Um, my husband, um, boyfriend at the time, was away on tour. And I was feeling kind of anxious and I was looking for something to fill my time that might distract me. So I was wandering around our Michaels and I found a cross-stitch kit that I thought looked really cute. And I thought, hey, why not try that? And I fell in love. <laughs> I have that, that first kit. You know, I'm not gonna show you my finishes today. I think maybe like next video, I can do a finish parade and show you all my things. Um, I have a few finished pieces and almost none of them <laughs> have been like fully finished. Um, but I started out with like just a little dimensions kit. Uh, I'll have to look at what it's called when I actually show it to you, but it's like, Italian something. I don't know. It's a kitchen thing. There's like oil and wine and grapes and stuff in it. It's just like food. I love food. So I was like, hmm, food pattern. Let's do it. Um, so I did that. Fell in love. I will show you my second pattern ever though. So um, I kept on stitching throughout 2016. And for my husband's birthday of that year, I decided it might be fun to try and draft my own pattern. So I drafted my own pattern for my very first cross stitch. I've only ever done that one time since. Um, and I thought you might get a kick out of seeing what it is. So my husband's vegan, but he loves a character on Twitter called Carl Welzine, who's just like a dumpster fire of a human being, essentially. <laughs> like it's not a real guy, like a comedian writes in the voice of this like psychotic boomer, essentially. Um, but he's, uh, Carl, the character is really into McRibs and I thought it would be fun to put like a Carl quote with a McRib. Oh, that's backwards, but that's fine. It says sweet ring and rockin' pony. Cause why not? And there it is, a McRib. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I did this out of floss I just like had lying around. Uh, how did I create this pattern? I stared at a picture of a McRib. <laughs> I was recently digging through my craft drawer and I found the original pattern. Oh boy. This is, this is what I made. <laughs> I don't really necessarily know how to read that, but I did it on graph paper. I think each of the letters must signify a color. We're gonna say that's what that is. Yes, because I have white, yellow, and yellow at the top. But that's my McRib pattern. Feel free to take a screenshot and make your own McRib. <laughs> anyway, um, 
I stared at my ribs for way too long on the internet to, to capture this beast here, but I did it. And uh, is it fully finished correctly? No, it absolutely is not. I had no idea what I was doing. I just sort of chopped it up. And part of me looks at this and it's like, you know, Michaela, you could fully finish this. But will I do that? No, I won't. I won't be doing it. It's just gonna stay the way it is. For the foreseeable future anyway. Maybe, maybe the urge will come upon me. Um, so anyway, that was my second project ever. Um, but yeah, it, essentially I've been cross-stitching on and off since 2016. Um, I've had some slowdowns. I've burned myself out on cross-stitch. And I really, really got back into it last summer when I discovered floss tube. I feel like that's many people's story. <laughs> I discovered a community of people showing off really cool stuff and I wanted to stitch it. So that's where I am today. Uh, so I thought it would be fun to do a whip parade because why not? I have 10 whips, I believe. I think it's 10. I have them all here. They are in very rough chronicle, chronicle? chronological order. Very rough chronological order. And um, we'll start with this beauty on top here. So I, I bought myself, I had only been doing kits um, in my early stitching uh, with, you know, the exception of the McRib. Uh, I had only been doing kits, small kits. And I was like, you know what would be great is to do like a really big piece, challenge myself, you know? So um, it was, it must have been the summer of 2016, actually. Um, we were driving through Edmonton on the way to a family reunion and we stopped at the Craft Connection, which, oh my God, I hear they're closing down. Very sad every time I go through Edmonton, which is not often, but I did go there this past summer. I stop in the Craft Connection and I drop a chunk of change because they have everything. And it's very sad to hear that they're closing. Although I do believe they're shifting their inventory to somewhere else in Edmonton. So Edmontonians will hopefully not be left without an LNS like us here in Vancouver. We don't have an LNS in Vancouver. My LNS is Michael's. And it does not have anything. <laughs> There's like Ada, white Ada, if you're lucky. Like I saw five different shades of white Ada the last time I was there. No linen, nothing. I hear tell that there are two shops on the island, but I don't go to the island. I don't have any reason to go to the island. I mean, the island's lovely, but it's like really expensive to go over there. And I haven't been there in a few years. Maybe I'll go back. Maybe I'll go to Victoria and check out the local needle shop there and needle workshop there and see what they have. But anyway, for now, there's nothing here. So I just, when I travel, I look to see if there are needle workshops where I'm going through and I make sure to hit them so I can stock up. Anyway, I had purchased this kit. Cabin fever? Oh my God, the glare, sorry. Side note, lighting's gonna be changing. The sun is going down in front of me. Um, there's gonna be glare. None of my projects are ironed. So if that is upsetting for you, just warning you now. <laughs> It's just a bit messy over here, but that's okay. We love mess, don't we? Um, so yeah, Dimensions Kit, the Gold co Collection, Cabin Fever. It should look like that. It's gonna be absolutely beautiful. I put this on my WIPGO board this year. Um, I started this in 2020. Um, that's when I kinda, like I was stitching throughout 2016, 2017, a little bit in 2018, and then I think I stopped for a bit. And the pandemic came around and I was looking for something to do. So I started again and I started with this kit, I think June, 2020 probably. And I haven't touched it probably since August, 2020. And I was like, why? Why would I put this beautiful project down? Well, it was called this month for WIPGO and I remember why I put it down. I just, ugh. working on this is like pulling teeth. I'm just gonna put it out there. Um, I don't know why I'm following what the pattern is saying at this point. I know it's a nightmare and I'm doing it. And what I mean by that is this is a very, <laughs> this doesn't feel that rough, but it is a tight, is it tight? I don't even know. It's an 18 count Ada 
and they're asking me to use five strands for some of the um, sections of the pattern. And it like starts shredding the thread instantly. I'm like, why dimensions? This is fully within your <laughs> capacity to not ask people to do this. And yet five strands is where we're at. So this is what I have. Um, everything over, <laughs> everything over here is what I was working on in August and these trees, uh, August of 2020, up to August of 2020, pardon me. The black is what I added over five days at the beginning of March. It took me five days to put those in. And really I count, for like for my Whipco board, I counted days and like I put in a stitch. Um, I wanted to never touch this project again after doing this because this is five strands of black. I don't know if you can see, like, it's so thick. Ugh. Why? And like, why didn't I just, I saw five strands. Why didn't I just decide to do three instead? I could have done that, but I didn't. I did five. I hated every moment of it. And now I'm like, well, I can't go to three now because the thickness will look different. So I feel like I'm in a bit of a pickle. Also this project, because I started it when I was still like a little baby stitcher, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. The stitches are going in every direction. Like, the, so the tent stitches are all going one way, but the, the full crosses for whatever reason, I don't even know if you can see the difference. You probably can. For whatever reason, the full crosses, I decided the top arm of the stitch should definitely go in a different direction than the half stitch. Why? Why past Michaela? You know it shouldn't be like that. I know now anyway. So stitches are lying in all different directions. It's thick as hell, but I think I'm gonna just keep plugging away at it. Maybe it'll be done by the time I'm 40. <laughs> I just turned 36 this year. We'll see. But, um, yeah, that's what we got so far for cabin fever from Dimensions. Yuck. If I picked this up now, I probably would have picked like a completely different fabric and gone my own way. <laughs> but because I had already started it, I kind of felt beholden to doing what I was doing before. A mistake. Let's just say that. Anyway. This is my oldest whip. I'm going to show you my second oldest whip now, which I actually enjoy. <laughs> Not this. Um, I'm just going to throw it on the ground. You're going to hear some clumps, some clanks, lots of zipper sounds. It's going to be an oral feast for the ears. Uh, okay, so my second whip, which I absolutely adore, but it has its own problems that I will tell you about. <laughs> Beginner stitchy problems. Uh, is the chopping mole from the witchy stitcher. Oh my god, it's so cute. I am a huge horror fanatic. I'm obsessed with horror. Shudder's one of my favorite subscriptions. Uh, the Last Drive-In with Joe Bob Briggs is coming back in April. Can't wait. <laughs> um, this was also a whip go pull recently. I threw it back on my board because I worked on this quite a bit in 2020. I think the last time I touched it was like 2021. I kind of burnt out on it for whatever reason. Um, and I had this room here with Reagan and Captain Spaulding, I think it is, from House of the Thousand Corpses. Um, this room, <coughs> pardon me, I'm getting over a cold. No, I got over a cold about two weeks ago. The cough is still hanging around. So that's gonna be popping up every once in a while as well. But anyway. So I had this room half finished uh, and I finished it in February, I believe uh, this was called. Yeah. So my goal is to finish this by the end of the year. Um, I have like a bunch of rooms on my Whipgo board. I have the frame, which you can see is like very much in progress. Um, but yeah, I really hope to be done it by the end of this year so I can frame it and admire it. Um, now, as I mentioned, this has its own problems. So this is on a 14 count Ada with um, fabric I got at, I actually think I got this from Dresso, which if you are in Vancouver, you know it's a really awesome fabric store downtown. Um, they had a 
big roll of 14 count Ada. So I bought it there. And I also bought some Rit dye because I didn't think to just, you know, maybe look online and purchase some fabric there. I was like, I can do it myself. It'll be fine. Um, so I dyed this fabric myself with Rit black dye. I wanted to get a nice gray and I achieved that. Did I make sure it was color fast? Nope. Um, so <laughs> I'm afraid I can never wash this because I think, I think the dye might continue to bleed. I don't know for sure, but I think it just might be one of those pieces that doesn't get washed and, you know, maybe gets a little aged over time. But, you know, I think for the theme, it might work. It's horror themed. If it looks a bit grimy, it's just going to be part of the piece, right? Okay. What else do we have? Um, oh, okay. I may as well go in here and pull this out. Um, so this is not fully chronological, but this was my new year, new start. I've been waiting to start this for so long. Absolutely love this pattern as someone who loves all the creepy crawly things. Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow. You all know it. You'll love it. Hopefully. <laughs> um, so this is also on my Whipco board. I put like a half block on like four slots and in January um, two half blocks got called so I had to do a full block January. I did not realize how massive this was so that did not get finished but we got most of the way there. Um, so this is <laughs> this is my progress so far. Um, this is a it's a 32 count light mocha that I got at the Craft Connection. And um, I knew this was a big project, but I don't think I like really got the scale of how large it was gonna be, especially on a 32 count. If I had known, probably would have gone with 40, but we've made our choice. And I, you know, I really do enjoy stitching on 30, 32 count. This is just gonna be a Mondo project. So this is where we're at. <laughs> Look at the size of the square. It's freaking huge. Like, enorme. Truly ridiculous. Um, anyway, this is what I've done. <laughs> um, I'm going to be working on this probably until the end of the month just to try and finish the graves. I don't think I'm going to do the back stitching until I do at least, like, the, um, the other half of the second block because I don't want to, like, put my hoop over the back stitch and like mess it up. Um, I should move that. Oh, I got this needle minder from the witchy stitcher store. So cute. It's from, it's like a reference to Crimson Peak, um, which is a great movie from Guillermo del Toro that I love. Anyway, so Halloween Hawk Run Hollow. I'm absolutely like loving this pattern. It's so cute. Um, I don't know if we're showing back ends here, but Look at that. Look at that clean backside. Oh my God. <laughs> anyway, love this pattern. I'm not a very fast stitcher. Um, I hope to fully fill out my Whipco board by the end of the year, but like this may prove a challenge because I'm going to have to do a full other block by the end of the year too with all my other stuff. So we'll see. We'll see if that happens. <laughs> um, okay. Ugh, just throw that in the bag. Next up is a sal I think that a lot of people are working on. A stitch along for those who are not in the know. Um, but this is Dark Queen of the Earth from Autumn Lane Stitchery. And I'm stitching this on 32 count Gilded Oak, which is one of the two colors that were like dyed specifically for the project by, I think it's Under the Sea Fabrics that did this. Um, it's still in the Q-Snap. I'm not gonna take it out. <laughs> but here's the bottom of her dress. I have done parts one and two. So basically like the top half of her skirt is done. This is the bottom half. I am like woefully behind on this. Am I gonna finish it in time with everyone else? No, absolutely not. But um, I'm enjoying it. It's just like, this is a, it's a lot of stitching. It takes a long time and I'm very slow. Very, very slow, but that's fine. We don't need to be super fast at everything in life, right? 
Anyway, how cute, how nice, I love it. Oh my God, and it's in the cutest bag too. Um, I got this from Little Boat 88 who I believe is also Canadian actually. Um, oh, so cute. Friggin' look at that. <laughs> okay, also, I am like so terrible at organizing my projects. I fully intend to use uh, floss drops. I bought like this cute paper to do it. I cut out maybe 15. I put threads on those. I have yet to cut any more. They're just off, like all my threads are in a sack basically right now. Fine by me. Things are a little disorganized, but so be it. Um, oh, and uh, it also came with this cute little thread bed that is like wedged, wedged in here. <laughs> anyway, there's my progress on Dark Queen of the Earth. Um, maybe one day you'll see the rest of her, but I cannot be bothered to remove her from the cue snap while I'm still working on this section. So you'll just have to deal with it. Sorry. Okay, moving along. What else do we have? Um, I love fall. Who doesn't? I'm sure there's people who hate fall, but whatever. I feel like fall's a nice season. Um, ooh, another Little Boat 88 bag. Ah, thematic. So cute. Um, so this pattern is from Twin, Twin? Twin Peak Primitives. The richest season of the soul is what it's called. And it is hella cute. I have this, I think, yes, it's a 32 count Weeks Dye Works Cappuccino Linen. I think, it, I think it's Weeks Dye Works. It says Weeks on the tag. I got this from Acorns and Threads when I was there in September. But this is what I got so far on this one. Another absolutely adorable pattern. So cute. Um, oh, this needle minder. This was a collab with um, Night Spirit Studio. And I can't remember for the life of me the, the, the name of the maker of this, but I'll add it in the comments. Or the, sorry, the video description. If you can't see, that's a Leviathan cross on this. You know, throw satanic symbols down on your cross stitch, why not? <laughs> So cute. I love this. I work on this like one or two Sundays a month just to keep progress up on it. And I really like stitching on it. It's so sweet. And I love these weird ass crows. Like what? What is going on with those birds? <laughs> anyway. Yep. This one's cute. I love it. Throw it back in here. And we'll move along to the next one. <coughs> Pardon me. So the next one we have, ooh, this one I started in February, I believe. This is just called Red Cardinals, I think. It's from Owl, uh, Owl Forest Embroidery. I have it on a mm, 32 count antique ivory. And this is, I just got a little start on it. It was a whip go pull. I don't have like, I didn't have a ton of whips when I started my whip go board. So I put like things I wanted to start as well as like older projects and stuff. So that was what I did over five days in February. It's gonna be super cute. I'm gonna add some birds in there. I'll probably turn it into a pillow. I say this having never made a pillow in my life. I have framed cross stitch before, like I framed my own pieces. Um, and by my own pieces, I mean, I've not, other than this, other than this, I've not framed anything for myself. I've framed stuff that I've completed for like my mom and my sister. And I've done like one commission piece for somebody that I framed. But uh, yeah, none for myself, even though I have several finishes that are in dire need of display. <laughs> They're just like rotting away in bags. I hope they aren't actually rotting. They're fine, they're just sitting. They're sitting in bags, not rotting. Um, anyway, we're working on that. It's gonna be very cute when it's done. And uh, yeah, I hope it's called again soon because I really enjoyed it. All right, next up, ooh, 
I started this um, for uh, my husband and I's dating anniversary earlier this year. And I've had this pattern for a while. And I have like the teeny tiniest start on it. This is also on my Whipgo board. It has not been called yet, but I wanted to start it on our anniversary. Um, it is, uh, I think it's just called Made for Each Other by The Witchy Stitcher. I have it on a 14 count Huntress, uh, 14 count Ada, pardon me. Um, the color is Huntress by Picture This Plus. Well, that's backwards, but it says Made For. <laughs> It'll say Made For You, um, or no, Made For Each Other, not Made For You, Made For Each Other. And one half is the Bride of Frankenstein's face and the other half is, um, Frankenstein. Well, Frankenstein's monster if we're gonna be pedantic. But anyway, gotta love universal horror. Bride of Frankenstein's one of my favorite movies too. I watched it in um, film class. I minored in film and video studies and I wept openly in class. And for me, that was highly embarrassing, but it felt really good. <laughs> I love that movie. It's so great. I subscribed to the Criterion channel and like they put all the Universal movies up this Halloween and I watched all of them because I had, there were like a few I hadn't seen. I'd never watched The Invisible Man before. That is a damn good movie. And I think it's by the same director who did Bride of Frankenstein. I think James Whale did that one as well. Excellent. Um, yeah, I'm so stoked for when this will be called because I want to put more stitches in my little monsters. Okay. Three more. Hold your breath. We're almost done. <laughs> uh, the next one, I started this on my birthday. This is from Maximum Cross Stitch. It is There Is Always Room. This is the pattern. I don't know if you've seen it before. Um, so Ellen Reed, the designer behind this, I had no idea that she was a cross stitcher or did floss tube or was a designer until I went to Acorns and Threads this uh, past September. I only knew her from the Crash Test Dummies who I've seen live a few times. I saw like, actually, I think it was just like her and Brad came to UBC, like the Chan Center and did kind of like a, an acoustic-y thing years ago. Um, she has a lovely voice. Anyway, I had no idea that she was involved in this wonderful world of cross stitch. So that was like pretty cool to discover. Um, I'm obsessed with her patterns. She's got a lot of really cute ones. And so I ordered this pattern in like the full kit through Evertote, uh, which is a Canadian website. And they are, they have the, these, Leo and Roxy flosses, which I think most people know about, but oh my God, sorry. There's a bag stuck to them. <laughs> Look at all that floss. Oh yeah. Anyway, Leo and Ro Roxy flosses. I am putting this on 36 count porcelain from Evertote, which is the called for for the pattern. I figured I'd just like, I love how it looks. I would just, I just wanted to like remake it entirely as it was. So I've only stitched on this for, I think this is just two days work. And it's not like they weren't even full days at that, but. I've just got like a little baby start on the border. My first time stitching on 36 count, my first time stitching with just one thread, um, which is, I suppose, easier because you don't have to like be concerned about how your threads are laying down on top of each other. But I love my 32 counts. <laughs> Maybe I'll try a 40 one day and be like a total convert, but I can't see myself giving up my 32s and 28s. I just really like them. I like how like, how big the stitches are, you know? But at the same time, I totally understand wanting to get like a piece on a smaller piece of fabric. And smaller things are generally better. Like I, I, had, I do have a lot of wall space on my apartment. I won't show you because it's a bit of a mess right now. This is not the most amazing background also. Like I live in a loft, so there's, <laughs> there's not a lot of good backgrounds here. Suppose I could have done the bookshelves, but then I would have had to move my table. And do I want to move things? <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, so you're stuck here at my desk with the fading sunlight behind me, changing the lighting settings throughout the video. So enjoy that. But anyway, um, there's always room. I love this pattern. I want to work on it one more day this month. Um, I stitched on it on Saturday, I think. 
it's Tuesday today, March 21st. Um, I don't know when I'll get this video up. Like I said, I don't think I'm gonna do any editing. I'm just gonna fling it up there and see what happens and maybe no one will watch it, but it's kind of not, I don't really care. <laughs> if you're watching this, comment below and let me know. Um, okay, two more. So this one I started for Black History Month and it was also my focus in February for Stitch for Pride, which is an initiative that Dee's 20 Stitches has put on. They have this absolutely incredible calendar. Uh, every month is gonna have a different theme, essentially, with learning prompts and actions you can undertake to sort of basically just expand your knowledge. Anyway, this is Data Portraits in Paris 1900 from the Shaded Stitchery. It is absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Look at it. It's so beautiful. So I joined this as a stitch along. Um, I'm behind, but that's fine. I've just been kind of doing it when I can. Um, I've been sharing this to my Instagram stories along with the actual images of the graphs that Shaded Stitchery has been posting on their Instagram account. Um, and it's just, quite honestly, I find it fascinating uh, a lot to learn. Um, oh, I'm stitching this on 28 count fog from Picture This Plus. I'm working on this section here. There's going to be like three more bars there, I believe. Yeah, absolutely lovely. If the sun was here, you would see how nice those colors look fully, but you can tell. You can tell they look pretty, right? Anyway, was working on that through February. I'm hoping to finish this next month, most likely. I'll get like a couple more sections done before the end of March, but it's not gonna get finished this month. No way, We've got too many other things to do. All right, we got one more left. So the final project I have to show you is actually one I started last night. And this was also a uh, Stitch for Pride prompt. Um, so the prompt this month was to stitch on a piece designed by a member of the AAPI community um, for Stitch Asia. Um, and I did that. I, oh man, I, I was trolling the Stitch Asia hashtag. So many cool designers. I've like added so many to my list, but I didn't want to buy another pattern because I have a lot of patterns. <laughs> I have a lot of patterns already. So I went with something I already had that could also double as a first day of spring start. So I went with cro I went with cottage garden samplings. The raccoon, he's sure cute. Okay, there's a bit of a glare, but whatever. You get it, you know this. It's the Year in the Woods series. Everyone was talking about these last year. So anyway, I got the raccoon. Um, I don't have the called for fabric. I'm obsessed with what that fabric looks like. Isn't that so nice? That green, I think it's on velt. Velt? Velt. I don't have velt. I wasn't gonna buy velt. I went through my stash and I found another picture of this plus fabric, but I found it in vellum, which to me looks like dirty greeny, kind of. Like there's like modeling that um, that looks green to me, at least in my eyes. I don't know if it'll look green to anyone else, but I think it's looking cute. So I just got like a little itty bitty baby start on this one. Um, this is a 28 count fabric. <laughs> Where are you? Aha! Uh -huh. I just did the upper corner. Ah. <laughs> so cute. There's that nice little flower and I started a bit of the raccoon's tail. Anyway, that is looking lovely. Can you, like, do you get what I'm putting down here? Does that look kind of green to you? I feel like it looks green. I'm saying it's green. <laughs> but anyway, so that's where I got. Not a lot of progress, but it was just one night, so whatever. I'll work on it more throughout the spring. It's so cute. I have, um, I wanna get an animal from each season. I'm still trying to figure out what I want from the summer because none of them are like fully speaking to me, you know? 
Maybe the bear? Like the bear is really cute. And the owl's okay too. I think the owl's summer. No, I can't remember. But I have the fox, because he's cute. And I have the little brown bat, of course. So adorable. I had to get it. Um, where do you belong? I don't know. We'll figure it out later. Anyway, those are all my whips. Awesome. Um, I don't really have any haul. I don't do a lot of hauling. Uh, <laughs> I am in Mystic Fabrics, Fabric of the Month Club, but I get them every two months uh, because shipping is like pfft, stupid. Um, and thankfully she offers the option to like ship two fabrics every two months instead of one fabric every month. So that kind of helps. Um, I will have haul, actually. I'm going to Portland <laughs> in three weeks. So obviously we're going to Acorns and Threads. <laughs> I'm going with my sister, my cousin, and like one of my best friends. And they've already been warned that they are gonna be dragged to the store. <laughs> and I'm like, maybe you can all pick out a cross stitch project. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm just gonna just, yeah, spend too much money there. It's gonna be great. I have like, there were so many things from um, Nashville that I want, like, my God, I want five o'clock. Is it called five o'clock from Ink Circles? The one with all the drinks. I want that so bad. And a few other ones as well. So I'm gonna keep my eyes open when I get to the store. We'll see. Um, anyway, that's what I've been working on. Um, I guess I could talk about a few more things before I wrap. Um, some of the floss tubers that have inspired me to start or maybe not necessarily even inspired but like who I love to watch are um I've already mentioned them but I love watching D's 20 stitches they were actually the first floss tube channel I ever watched we have a friend of a friend on Instagram and that friend posted about their floss tube and I'm like what the hell is a floss tube <laughs> so I watched it and I was like oh damn this is really cool sorry I'm trying not to swear We'll try and keep it family friendly, but oh, one might slip out at some point. Who knows? Um, anyway, that's where I started and I have expanded out. I, I feel like everyone watches Just Keep Stitching. I'm obsessed with Pam. Pam, obsessed is a weird word. I shouldn't use that. Sorry. I just really like Pam. <laughs> Pam, Steph, you're both amazing. Um, yeah, so they're a lot of fun to watch. Uh, I watch, who else? Betsy Klager good times. Um, I also really enjoy the Seattle Stitcher, Museum Stitcher. Who else? Marjorie Maid is really fun and so is Cam the Stitcher. I feel like those ladies I'm like getting a, a vibe from, you know, I'm like, oh, okay, we're into the same types of projects. So I like watching that. Anyway, um, and I figure I could end on sort of like a fun little what I'm watching, reading, playing. I'm gonna include playing in this because I work in video games and I play video games. I don't know if that anyone else out there in Floss Tube Land is like fully into that, but if you play games, I might talk about them. <laughs> anyway, um, what have I been watching? Um, okay, I've been watching the new season of Party Down. I don't know if anyone watched that show when it was out 10 years ago. I certainly didn't, but I discovered it last year when a friend recommended it to me. It's cringe comedy at its finest and it's just so good. It has Adam Scott, Jennifer Coolidge is in, I think season two, Megan Mul Mul Mulaney, 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 I think, right? Jane Lynch, like it's an incredible cast. And the third season has just started. It's on stars, I think. It's like they haven't missed a beat. It, it's so painful, but so funny. So if you like that kind of comedy, I highly recommend Party Down. Um, I'm also doing like a rewatch of Buffy. My husband's never seen it. And I'm like, please join me in my teenhood. <laughs> Cause that, I, that show, I loved that show. Watching it back now, I'm just like, oh. <laughs> Some of the storylines are a bit ick. 
Um, and my God, I can't stand Xander. I'm sorry, if you're a Xander stan, I guess more power to you, but yikes. <laughs> Just <sighs> anyway, we're we, we're rewatching Buffy. We're like partway through season five. Things are a bit weird. Personally, I think season three is the best season, and parts of season four. Although I hate Riley. No, not for me. <laughs> I'm a Spike girl, as creepy as Spike is, as I'm seeing in season five. Um, he's a real creeper in this season, but I still. <laughs> I still love them. I don't know. What can I say? Problematic faves. Um, oh my god. And I'm so stoked. Yellow Jacket starts this Friday. Um, I was hooked on the first season. Watched it week to week. So can't wait for the second season to come out. Uh, what am I reading? I just finished Clara and the Sun by Kazuo, Kazuo Ishiguro. I think that's his name. I'm gonna put that in the description. Anyway, I have read most of his books. Um, this one was really good. I enjoyed it. Um, I f like lots of his books. I feel like they're, they're like a slow journey and you don't quite realize that you're in an emotionally devastating trap until the end. <laughs> um, I assumed I was in an emotionally devastating trap having read, you know, Never Let Me Go, The Buried Giant, Remains of the Day. <laughs> You know, I know that not all is what it seems um, in his writing. So yeah, that ending did hit me hard in Clara. Um, it's not my favorite of his novels, but it is, it's good. I would recommend reading it if you want a little, would you call that light sci-fi, I guess? I mean, there's a robot, it's in the future. Let's call it light sci-fi. What am I playing? I'm playing Hollow Knight. It's so cute and it's extremely difficult. I think the cuteness sort of, um, it did not prepare me for the difficulty that I would be facing when I was playing it. Uh, I, Someone I work with, it's one of their favorite games and I saw it was on sale. So I was like, oh, let's give it a shot. It's adorable. And only later did I learn that it's basically a Souls-like game, which I don't know if anyone here knows what that is. But it's, <laughs> there's a series out in the world of video games called Dark Souls, which is, is just notoriously difficult. You have to be very, very precise and good with your controls to be able to <laughs> beat those games. I'm terrible at them. I tried playing Elden Ring, which is um, uh, from, from Software, who makes the Souls games, and... I got about 15 hours in and uh, I stopped playing. <laughs> I, was, I hit a wall. I was like, nah, I'm not very good at this. But Hollow Knight, I'm making some progress. I've made it to the second section of the world. It's so cute. And I'm finding the gameplay really addictive. So like, I'll play it for an hour and be like, okay, that's probably enough for tonight, Michaela. Let's put it down. Let's do something else. Like half an hour later, I'm just like, I can probably grind out a few more sections. <laughs> so anyway. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching this. I hope it wasn't too boring or rambling or whatever. Um, I know I said I wasn't gonna make an edit, but I might make a couple edits because I feel like I stumbled a few times, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes, <laughs> if that's gonna happen. Yeah, uh, if you like this, subscribe to my channel. I don't know how often I'll be making videos. I, like I said, I'm not a very fast stitcher. So I don't really know how much progress I would have to show you after like two weeks, for instance. So this might be a monthly thing, but we'll see. Um, oh, and if you, want to, if you want to follow me on Instagram, you can find me at Cinematic. It is a personal account, but I do post a lot of cross stitch on there. So you're gonna see my cross stitch progress and you're probably also gonna watch some like punk bands because <laughs> I like punk rock and I go to shows. So maybe not fully everyone's cup of tea, but some of the content on there you might be into. Um, so that's, I'll post it in the show notes. The show notes. <laughs> I'll post it in the video description, uh, but it's cinematic, spelled like old school leet speak, 
can we tell I'm a millennial? I don't know if anyone actually types this way anymore, but the E is a three, just like how my YouTube name is written here, and I'm sure it's gonna make it impossible for anyone to find me. Oh well, <laughs> that's fine. It's a choice I've made and I'm gonna live with it. Anyway, um, yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed watching me ramble on about my projects and what I'm doing. And um, yeah, I'll see you again. Thanks for joining me, bye-bye.